Hey, Steven, how are you? Good. Uh, Will we be able to... Oh, okay, you have camera. Very good, very good. <laughs> okay, I, I need to do some preparations around, but uh, we will, I hope you will start in time. Okay. Hi, Dr. Killian. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing good, thank you. Oh, you look cute. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Do you have uh, Do you have the um, camera for when you will be presenting? Uh, yeah, I enable camera, but I don't know why it doesn't work. Uh, it is advised to use uh, the uh, specific the Google Chrome. Hello. Ah. <laughs> the browser. Nice seeing you. Yeah, nice to see you too. I, I will be back from another terminal. Oh, that's fine. In few minutes. Hello. Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, how are you? Okay. Mary? Hi, how are you? Very good, how are you? Good, good. It's so uh, very strange. To apply, you decided to apply to a different school? Uh, I finishing up with the master's, um, so we decided to go with the master's for the program, and my interest shifted back to the uh, solar cells. So by chance coincidence, I I found about Dr. Colliate and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is really good. So I was really excited. <laughs> so now you're moving, you're moving to a different school, to a different program, and now you will be on a PhD program. And is it physics, chemistry, material science? What is the program, is it? It's applied engineering. So everybody oh. who comes in has a completely different background, but they're all like interconnected. We have electrical then, engineers. Then your PhD will be in applied engineering? This it's like it chemical, is. it's chemical engineering. Chemical engineering, okay. Yeah, okay. it just has a strange name. She wants it to be changed because most people are like, I don't know what this is, but chemical but engineering I, is, yeah. But this is in Canada, right? Yes, yes, it's in Nova Scotia. How, I don't know how the system in, in Canada is working because uh, in, at, and if it's the same as at US or not, if it is the same, then it should be the official invitation I should get from the school. To yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, no, they will, it will, I will send you the details. It will be all uh, automated. Uh, uh, people would get a, you know, or wherever. It's the same, it's, it's absolutely the same. So no, no okay. difference. Okay, yeah, so then yeah, so no problems. All automated, I just very easy. <laughs> Yes, yes. I uh, will get a, a confirmation. Uh, the official offer will actually set to do arrive this week. And then I will officially fill out everything and send back to you or 
indicate in the online application all those details. So it should be pretty quick. Okay. Um, but Good. take your time because there's there's no I mean, there's no rush. We have some time. Okay. So. Uh, that is, can you let us know how to enable the video? I cannot find it. Um, if you are using the uh, browser, the Google Chrome, then okay. it should uh, it should be enabled uh, automatically. Uh, I'm using Chrome, but it doesn't work. I don't know why. Uh, please chat to to each other because. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, it was working on my side, but maybe someone did have uh, similar similar problems. Okay. Ah. Hi. Hey. Hey. Maybe you wait until uh, everyone next and then start shortly. Yeah. Oh, I knew you, you were able to, uh, to make yes. it work. Excellent. So uh, let me check before we uh, Let me check if we have uh, all speakers, at least the first one. Is Raju connected? Yes, I am. Okay. Jaufan? Yes, I'm here. Okay. We have it, and I, I see in your list, we have uh, first uh, three speakers. So, um, congratulations with um, arriving to this uh, point for uh, members of the class, and uh, thank you for joining this connection for uh, all uh, visitors um, of the class, because it is uh, very, we all are very pleased to um, show what's uh, Students achieved during half a year, and uh, probably class attendees will be happy to answer unexpected uh, questions. So, this is um, CAM 476 slash 676 uh, introduction to computational quantum chemistry course. And um, uh, this is for both graduate and undergraduate students. The course did uh, have uh, four goals to provide a theoretical background in computational chemistry to share the uh, basic practical skills of modeling materials and modeling, and two more um, goals to apply the skills to uh, practical problems, and uh, the uh, goal number four, uh, scientific communications. So um, attendees of the, of the class 
were already practicing and testing uh, and being examined on their uh, abilities in um, sections one and two in uh, theoretical background and practical skills. And today's meeting is basically on bringing their uh, new skills into real life. There is a hope that um, this uh, skills will be later um, successfully and beneficially used for uh, research projects of their uh, primary investigators and towards uh, their degrees. So um, <coughs> there will be eight talks. Um, they are symbolically uh, brought split on the uh, three sections. So functional materials, nanostructures, and uh, uh, catalytic reactions. So the connection is enabled for uh, two hours, just in case. But the plan is to um, spend no more than five minutes uh, on uh, each individual presentation. And uh, to enable whatever is needed, but no more than, uh, say, three or four minutes for uh, questions. So speakers, uh, please try to be brief. Uh, being brief is, is, is good for the group. Another uh, little advertisement. Uh, if <coughs> you're not speaking, if you're not the speaker and you're not asking the question, it is advised to mute the microphone. Uh, it will uh, enable higher quality of, uh, of transmission. But if you are speaking, please do enable microphone and, and camera. Um, so there will be um, there will be uh, slides transmitted from uh, this station. So the speakers are uh, invited uh, to give voice uh, messages, like next slide, when it will be time. So uh, with this, I would like, uh, and before we start, I would like to acknowledge uh, support of um, College of uh, Science and Math Mathematics at DCU, the uh, CCAS uh, Computational Center at DCU, and uh, uh, NERSC, uh, Department of Energy Center, as well as uh, the National Science Foundation grant. So uh, with this, I would like to invite the first speaker, um, MD, as a from our Jew, to speak. Roger, uh, um, please test the mic. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. OK. okay. And, um, Thank you, Dr. Uh, Dimitri. OK, and let me bring the first, uh, the first slide. OK. For yours, I'm stop watching in five minutes. OK, thank you, Abion. Uh, so the topic of my project is study of structural and optical properties of cubic LLZO with the challenge in temperature, in change in temperature, in pre, uh, temperature uh, using the previous slide, please. Yes, uh, the title of my project is study of structural and optical properties of cubic LLZO with the change in temperature using first principle calculation. So um, I am the presenter, MD Mujamal Kamal Raju, and course instructor, Dr. Dimitri. Next, please. So in the introduction, um, we'll discuss why we need to study this project. So day by day, uh, with the increase in population and the number of modern industry, uh, the demand of power is increasing. As a result, but we are losing our natural resources. So as a result, we are looking for 
reliable alternate sources of energies, which triggers the emergence of energy storage devices. So among these energy storage devices, lithium ion battery is considered most promising energy storage devices, and which is solid um, and LLZO, the lithium lanthanum zirconium oxide, is the solid state electrolyte, which is the most important part of this device. So LLZO has two st stable phases, the tetagonal phase, which is stable at room temperature, and which has very low ionic conductivity, order of 10 to the power minus 6, Siemens per centimeter. And the another one is cubic phase, which is stable at higher temperature, generally more than 400 Kelvin, and which has uh, a little bit higher ionic conductivity, as you can see. Why this study is important? Because the um, synthesis process for LLZO is sintered at higher temperature. Generally, it is it's sintered at 1230 centigrade, so almost 1500 Kelvin. And um, this study will show the band gap and UV spectra analysis because this is the inherent property of materials. Next, please. So the method, methodology will be used for this calculation is DFT calculation. We will use BASP software, and we will use the poor correlation uh, functional um, and also for the total energy calculation, we will be using PBE GGA approximation. And for the K space, we will use Mong Monghorst pack, um, one into one into one matrix, and a cutoff frequency of 520 electron volt will be used for CD potentials. Next, please. So. Uh, this is the, you can see, this is the initial uh, system structure for our um, model. Um, we, we have used eight PFU, so uh, we have used eight um, uh, combined cell for, as a unit cell, uh, which has 192 atoms, where um, uh, we'll be only focusing, mainly focusing on the blue spheres, which is lithium atoms uh, in this uh, cell. Um, um, so let me tell you one thing. Uh, we have 56 lithium atoms here, but for these 56 lithium atoms, we have 120 available space uh, in this unit cell, and uh, which is um, the available space is for these lithium atoms come from uh, uh, 24D uh, tetradelcite and also from 96H octadal site. Next, please. And uh, Raju, you already spent four minutes out of five, so please uh, keep it in mind. So, uh, so, so the result uh, the and discussion, so thermal stability. So for the thermal stability, you can see, uh, first of all, we have to look, is it the, uh, the model is stable with thermal position? when we increase the temperature. For the elevated temperature, you can see the um, graph is almost uh, constant uh, with the time step. So if we do the more time step, it will be more, uh, this is for 500 uh, time step. If we increase more time step, uh, then it will be more stable. Next, please. So uh, you see the band gap, uh, as, the, as you see the, the total energy is decreasing. Uh, um, the band gap is decreasing with the increase in the temperature. So this is the graphical view. So uh, if we go next slide, you will see the tabular form. Next slide, please. So you see with the increase in temperature, the band gap is decreasing from 4.37 to 2.41. So that means uh, the this is going from dielectric to uh, very high high band gap semiconductor, and also the total energy is uh, decreasing because uh, the kinetic energy is um, converting to uh, 
sorry, the potential energy is converting to kinetic energy and it is converting into heat. That's why the total energy is decreasing. Next, please. Um, also, you see the optical property and you see the um, um, optical band gap. It, it's shifting from left to right. So it's going flatter from left to right. So uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, potential, uh, uh, because, um, uh, and, and you see at the higher temperature, at 1500K, there comes a two lobe, extra lobe. That's the with lower amplitude, which is clear the indication of the uh, ionic movement and the broken bond for our model as we increase the temperature. Next, please. Uh, previous slide. Uh, we skipped one. Actually, uh, okay, okay, it's okay, Dr. Dimitri. So uh, we skip one slide, uh, it's okay. So this is the interatomic distance uh, for the, for our model. So if you see the very first one, this is for at the zero Kelvin, at the zero Kelvin, and the, the D, the number D is for the 1500 Kelvin. So you see there are, uh, the spikes are clearly visible for zero Kelvin. That means uh, the bond, the atomic bonds are clearly there, but as we increase the temperature, the, uh, um, the spikes are getting flatter. That means the more bonds are breaking, and uh, uh, this indicates the atoms are getting closer, and this, uh, this um, indicates the electronic transition possible at lower temperature. Next, please. So uh, as we increase the temperature, our um, uh, ordered geometry become disordered. And this is the clear indication from this figure. So number A is for zero Kelvin, and number D is for 1500 Kelvin. Next, please. So uh, this is the molecular dynamics. You will see the 300 Kelvin one, uh, the, the blue one is the lithium ion, but you will see its movement is very slow. The, as you can see, for 750, uh, the movement of lithium ion will be a little bit higher. And they are changing their uh, position. Uh, they are changing their atomic site. So uh, in 1500 case, so you see uh, the uh, uh, migration of lithium ions is faster and it, they are changing uh, their site. So next. So it is clear from here that, so uh, the limitation of this uh, uh, project is this is not an ideal scenario. We just extrapolated the mechanism from our simulated results. And uh, uh, the consideration of uh, lithium and uh, oxygen loss uh, due to high temperature uh, has been disregarded because this is simulation process. Next. So uh, uh, in the conclusion, we can say the optical property is very important to investigate. And from this investigation, we can say the lithium ion uh, is changing their position from one side to another side. And uh, because of that, the uh, ordered geometry of the LL, cubic LLGO is getting disordered. And because of this migration of lithium ions, uh, the uh, Conductivity of cubic LLGO is higher, getting higher. Next. 
So um, the main thing is to get uh, is, is to get a disordered geometry, and we can get it by uh, creating vacancies, interstitials, or doping, which can be a further um, research uh, study plan of our um, um, this course. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, please uh, join me in thanking uh, Raju. The presentation is open for, for discussion. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Dr. Hong. Oh, yeah, okay. So, um, you know, it, it's a nice work. I mean, you are very brave because it's a very challenging issue that you're looking at, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's nice. Um, and it's a, a good exercise for, for the cost. Now, if you are thinking about, you know, uh, from the research side, you know, yeah, lots of issues that you should, you know, pay attention to. The yeah. first one is the band gap that you calculated is significantly lower than the actual band gap. The band gap of LLGO is about six electron volt. Yes. And you, the biggest, the largest value you got is about four or something. Right? The first issue, yeah. and that is common with DFT calculation. The second yeah. problem is, I then uh, you know determine band gap, you know using the the calculation that you do. I mean it's very tricky, because you know you don't have a ground state structure, right? You know, you do MD simulation, every atom's moving around, and then you look at the that's the state and you identify the band gap value. I mean. Um, yes. You know, be careful yeah, with yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Kong, you're absolutely right. Uh, because the band gap is more than six generally, but uh, in our simulation, we got uh, uh, 4.3 something, and we checked most of the simulation, they got uh, this kind of result um, uh, because, because of the um, approximation and the calculation method. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you, we, we have more time, but it's a very, a very challenging issue here. Is yes. Now you have a partially disordered system, so especially when you hit up, you know, you have something like band tail near the band edge. And you know, it depends on what you're looking at. If you look at the electronic structure, uh, electronic property or optical property, it depends on because you know the electronic state near the band as may be localized, and it contribution, yeah, contribution to the conductivity or to the property, uh, optical properties is different. Another thing is when you do MD simulation, you let the atom moving around, but uh, I don't think you let the largest parameter to relax, right? It's mean that you fix the system at the experimental largest constant. And yes. that is another problem because in reality, you know, when you hit it up, it's very likely that the materials go to, to expand and that's going to change the band gap value okay. and that's going to change the optical properties. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. More more questions to uh, to the first speaker. Uh, yeah, yes. so, uh, yeah. Hi, Raju. Uh, so I think OVA is very good. So uh, through taking this course, uh, you are, now you are able to <laughs> use the VASP, uh, use the first principle uh, to uh, start some relationships uh, between uh, between the material, the band gap, or the temperature, something like that. I guess I want to point out one thing that you uh, something like you mixed up a little bit. So the temperature, uh, the temperature you use to synthesize, to synthesize the material, and the temperature you use to study the, uh, the property of the material, and they are, actually they are different uh, different things. So the temperature of uh, the use to synthesize, but you, you you talk about the loss of the lithium oxygen something like that uh, yeah doing the synthesis that, uh, that, that that's a different different issue so now you actually you are studying uh, the uh, the impact of temperature on the property a uh, bank gap or uh, uh like radio uh, distribution stability something like that so now that you suppose the material ha has been synthesized so the material is stable so the, uh, uh, thermally, uh, 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 some dynamically uh, uh, stable. So now uh, you you study how uh, the temperature affect 
uh, affects those uh, the, the property of the material. So therefore, there is, there is different things. Okay. Yeah, Doctor uh, Doctor Zhang. That's why I mentioned this as my limitation. The slide in the limitation I already mentioned that this is not ideal scenario. Yeah. We just extrapolate, and the lithium and oxygen loss has been disregarded. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is more related to the stability of uh, the comp composition of crystal structure, the stability of the material. Uh, the material. Good. Okay. Thank yeah. Thank you. you. Uh -huh. there, there was one more question. I, I saw there were raised hands. Yes. There okay. Were, were... Um, Yes, so uh, very good work. Uh, the question I have to you uh, relates to previous discussion points. Uh, if you were to redo this study, how would you, which functional would you think you would go to? Because yours was uh, an underestimate. So yeah. which functional would you go to? In part, that's part one and part two. Uh, would you reduce your atom size or take a smaller chunk of your system? Go ahead. Uh for, uh, for the functional, I don't know which going to fit, but uh, there are different functional like the uh, GGA plus U, Hubbard, and uh, other functionals. Um, we have to see which gives the more uh, good results. After the simulation, we can see, um, but mm -hmm. not sure. Um, okay. How is the second question you asked? So your system, um, it sounds like it's, it, you know, looks like it's in motion. So there, there might be a lot of things going on. Would you reduce the size, or would would you do something different to it to, to give you something that's more a realistic start? What would you do? No, we just uh, uh, heated up the system, and run the uh, molecular dynamics, and um, observe the uh, motion of the ions. We didn't put when, when you're, did you put any restriction when you're running it in VAS, correct? Did you have any restrictions on any of the atoms, or you were just looking at, like, what when you set up your parameters, how did you go about that? Um, can you please say again? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to know in your initial structure when you optimized, where was everything free? I mean, like, you were just looking at the moment in motion of the, the ions, right? The lithium ions. Or did you have any kind of set parts like frozen? What, what were your boundary conditions? No, did you no, have boundary no. Conditions? We just okay. we just free. Uh, the the atoms are free to move. Okay, so just I a free motion. It's not, it's not a fixed. No atom is fixed. They are free okay. to optimize. They are Sounds free good. to optimize. Why do you, why do you do that? Um, uh, any particular reason? We, we should we should. Um, I, okay. I apologize. That's it. <laughs> For me. <laughs> but we'll continue when, when all speakers are done. Uh, we may do a little bit more chat. And briefly, what Raju is doing is very huge uh, unit cell that cannot be made smaller, and he used periodic boundary conditions. So, with this, uh, let's thank Raju once again. And uh, let me uh, invite to the stage uh, Jalfan Lee. Um, so for uh, presentation number two on um, uh, cellulose and uh, some uh, computational properties of, of cellulose. Jalfan, do you have your microphone enabled? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, Dr. Kelly. Can you hear me? Yes. And we spent oh. um, 27 minutes instead of five on um, Raju, so we should we, the, the rest of speakers should be a little quicker. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my topic is the uh, effect of heat on the properties of cellulose nanocrystal by utilizing the density functional theory. Uh, next, please. The cellulose is the most uh, abundant and uh, renewable biopolymer, uh, which can be extracted from a lot of sources like the wood and cotton. And uh, due to uh, its lower cost and excellent uh, mechanical properties, Cellulose nanocrystal uh, has been used uh, in a lot of applications like the energy storage, reinforcement, or electronics. So here is a, a schematic figure show how the molecular structure of cellulose nanocrystal looks like. 
and uh, the unicell uh, in triclinic lattice tab has been used uh, for computational model in VASP. Next, please. And then we do the geometry optimization first to make sure the whole system reach to the local energy minimum status. And then the heat is applied from 300 K to 1000 K. Uh, for cellulose nano crystal, the melting temperature is around 600. So we choose three typical, uh, typical temperature, uh, well below the melting temperature, approaching and even well above the melting temperature. So the goal of this project is trying to uh, have a molecular level understanding of how the applied heat will influence the conductive properties of cellulose nano crystal. Uh, at the same time, we also look at the molecular dynamics as a 300 K and even high temperature. Uh, next, please. Uh, to get started, uh, let's look at the uh, absorption spectra first uh, as a function of transition energy and uh, the wavelength after the geometry optimization. Uh, the uh, spectra here uh, indicates the energy of uh, electron absorbed to move on to the next orbital. For example, the first transition energy peak uh, is around 2.3 electron volt, uh, which indicates the transition from the homo to lolo. Also, this value uh, is consistent with the band gap where, uh, and we will show uh, absorbs from the density of states we will talk about later. And uh, the first peak here also corresponds to the last peak of the absorbance, uh, where the wavelength is around 550 nanometer. Uh, the absorbance also can be used to describe the optical properties, just as the sites and also the color matters. Moreover, here is an illustration of HOMO and LUMO orbitals uh, after geometry optimization. As you can see here, the, up, uh, the uh, occupied orbital, uh, which in blue, uh, is primarily localized uh, um, hydrogen uh, atoms. However, their charge system tends to be distributed on the uh, negatively charged oxygen, uh, which corresponds to the red domain. Uh, next, please. And then let's move on to the density of state. So the shaded uh, purple region refers to the occupied or the balance band, while the empty area uh, corresponds to the unoccupied or the uh, conduction band. So the narrow band gap here is around 2.3 electron volts, uh, where the electron jumps from the HOMO to the LUMO. So in order to look at how, uh, whether the uh, Elevating temperature will influence the band gap of the sensei. I just summarized all the uh, apply the heat from the 300 K to 1000 K. Uh, Dr. Kidding, can you click uh, and then I'll show a table here. So I just summarized the uh, band gap information in this table. If you look at the first and the last column, actually there's no obvious correlation between the temperature and the band gap. Uh, probably due to the reason that the cellulose and the crystal is kind of uh, insulator. Uh, probably there's no significant correlation between the temperature uh, and the band gap uh, comparing to the semiconductor where the uh, band gap would uh, decrease uh, with increasing the temperature. Uh, next, please. We further uh, investigated the radio distribution function for different types of atoms uh, at a well range of temperature. The RDF here describes uh, how the density varies as a function of distance uh, from a reference particle. Actually, there's no big difference at uh, lower temperature. However, if you look at the red figures, the figures on the right side, the uh, the peak become broader, both for oxygen to oxygen bond and carbon to carbon bonds, uh, which indicates the increasing degree, degree of uh, morphization. Moreover, 
the intensity is uh, at a high temperature is pretty lower than the intensity at a lower temperature. Uh, I feel like probably due to um, due due to some breaking of bonds uh, because the uh, at high temperature the CNC is kind of in melting state. And also, I showed two short video. Uh, Dr. Kidding, can you click it? Yeah, if we look at the detail, uh, there is two short videos showing how the atoms looks like at uh, 300K and 1000K. Yeah, if you look at the uh, the right side, actually there is a bond breaking and reforming phenomenon at uh, the 1000 K where the temperature is well above the melting temperature. Okay, next please. All right, then I just also show the molecular dynamics at different temperature. Uh, it's very similar to Roger's uh, work at a lower temperature, the uh, mobility is pretty low. However, in high temperature, the atoms move a little bit faster. Uh, next please. Also, just uh, due to the time limitation, I would just briefly uh, to recap. And there is no obvious correlation between the band gap and uh, the elevating temperature. But from the RDF, we can know that at uh, even high temperature, it shows the increasing degree of amorphization. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thanks. Any questions? OK. Uh, let's thank Zhao uh, for the yeah, presentation. Uh, it's open for discussion. I have a question. Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to say this is really, really great work. I am very curious about your conclusion statement and your spectrum. I'm sorry, your density of states. You made the case that there's no significant correlation between the band gap and the elevating temperature. Um, however, from my understanding, even small changes in electron volts can be rather large. Can you account for why it is it's not as big as you difference, or you, you made this conclusion? Could you go a little deeper into the discussion? Uh, uh, Don Kelly, can you go back to the uh, density of state? Yeah, but uh, actually, just from the observation, I didn't find the, I mean, the obvious correlation between the temperature and value gap just based upon the results. You add 1.86 for your band gap and then you go to two. I mean, that to me, that says something, but again, maybe maybe I'm wrong. So I mean, but I'm just curious to your, what do you think? I mean, that 300, that 300 seems very significant to me, but again, yeah. maybe I'm not thinking about this in the right way. So maybe if you can explain. Yeah, could I just check? Uh, I mean, they do add in three different temperatures. Also, I just run one case. Uh, probably, um, if I can run more cases at different temperature to have a more I mean, understanding. Uh, well, uh, I mean, you, and you think about in, in real life, an experiment, we would be doing temperatures that are much lower, not so, not, not so high. So it's interesting to see. Just it's really interesting work you're doing here. Yeah, and also, I'm not sure whether uh, it can be realized in a real experiment to test the real, I mean, cell and the crystal in the experiment. Jofan, uh, let me contribute to your discussion and uh, check your opinion on, on the, would the band gaps stay the same or uh, change if we use uh, simulation cell with more than one unit cell? Uh, could the um, errors be a trace of full interactions between uh, uh, images because of the unit so, uh, the simulation cell is too small. Okay, thank you. Uh, it, it's a question. You it's may question? answer. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I have uh, one comment about the oxygen and oxygen uh, band or bond. Bond you observe that when you increase the temperature, you you find the intensity of the bond. Uh, you uh, bond, uh, however, decreases. So you mentioned that probably it's because of uh, 
the bond got uh, the bond got broken. Uh, you uh, you said, but uh, it's very unlikely because if you uh, you consider that the energy at the room temperature, if, uh, if you uh, calculate with the KT, that would be uh, around twenty six million electron volts. So if you increase the temperature temperature from uh, 300 to 1,000 K, uh, which is the temperature you used. That, that means the energy will just increase uh, like uh, by three times or something like that. You, you only get just, um, like around 80, uh, 80 million electron volts. But if you consider the energy bound for oxygen and oxygen, uh, that's a, usually it's a stable electro, electron volt. So therefore, I just want to I want to point out uh, uh, very unlikely it's a reason uh, because some uh, oxygen and oxygen bond got uh, broken because of the increase in temperature. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, I'm thinking uh, probably due to the cutoff distance I choose in the VMD. If I choose different cutoff distance, uh, I mean some bonds will disappear or reform. Yeah. Probably due to that reason. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's possible, but it's uh, it's unlikely because uh, some bond, uh, some bond got broken. It, it, uh, that is a uh, uh, much larger, uh, high energy uh, than than the, than the temperature are resulting. Sorry. Okay, sure. Thank you for your comment. I saw raised hands. I yes. I have a question, and it's Please. kind of the same question which I wanted. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I can hear. You. Okay, it's the same question which I wanted to ask for the, for the previous speaker. Can you hear me? Because I see some, I, I hear a noise by myself. So when you show this density of states at higher temperatures, higher than zero Kelvin, uh, it was already re kind of a discussion before that you expect that you have you don't have a single structure because your system is not really represented in a single specific geometry and then it's supposed to be probably have a kind of statistical approach and average over several conformations to go with ensemble average so it looks like the doors which you are showing in this figure is just a dose of a single structure which you got um, when you're doing this molecular dynamics with heating to whatever temperature, right? Yeah, yeah, I understand. But, uh, you mean, yeah. But, but technically, you need probably to take hundreds, <laughs> at least hundreds of structures along the trajectory yeah. of your molecular dynamics, random, hundred random uh, conformations. For each of them, you need to plot the density of state and then average over all density of state. Then your density of state will be broader. And then probably the gap, average gap, from these 100 structures at each temperature will show you some dependence on temperature. It will be more reasonable to analyze. Because right now, you're really just taking a single random structure uh, with no guarantees that this is really the lowest possible structure, the most, uh, uh, the most uh, dominating structure. Yeah? yeah. So I think yeah. when you go higher you need to apply the uh, statistical approach. You need to average over several configurations. Sure, sure. And then, it's like, then it's then a question, it's just a comment, right? Right. <laughs> and now to the question, you, I probably missed it. Maybe you explained it. Can you give explanation, not the formula, but the explanation mm -hmm. physical of the physical meaning mm -hmm. uh, of the radial distribution function? What does it show? Yeah, uh, for the RDF, uh, it um, indicates the, uh, so first from the concept, it indicates the uh, how density varies as a function of distance uh, from a reference particles. So uh, for example, here is uh, oxygen and uh, there is another oxygen. It will show the density, the density distribu distribution uh, for different types of atoms or uh, how many atoms within this range with, uh, at a function of distance. So uh, okay. if, you take, if you take a nice polymer with a uh, ideal polymer with, uh, re oh, oh, maybe not the polymer, let's talk about inorganic uh, material, semiconducting metallic lattice with a very nice lattice uh, structure. How this, uh, what do you expect to see in your uh, radial distribution function and how it will be different from 
uh, amorphous case uh, for the system in in amorphous where the lattice is not having exactly the same structure yeah uh, i believe in uh, all other structure the rdf peak will be uh, more uh, narrow and uh, more concentrate but for the amorphous parts probably the there will be multiple peaks and uh, the fluctuation is pretty or it's hard to distinguish uh, that's yeah. my opinion okay yeah i think it will be not a single peak in a lattice uh, when you have a nice yeah. lattice but you will have a repetition of appearance of this peak with whatever the period of your whatever the symmetry of your uh, lattice structure with the period of a lattice structure you will see the appearance of of nice well-defined peak while for yeah. the amorphous the peaks will be very well uh, redistributed no uh, will be random and will be probably broadened very much okay thank you yeah. i think you answered okay thank you Let me let me invite uh, to everyone to send Jaufan once again, and uh, your attention that uh, since we are running of time, um, there could be not enough uh, time to discuss every question. But in this um, online format, we do have a chat room, and there one can type in additional questions uh, if they are technical. Uh, we may not be able to um, verbalize them. But uh, this, uh, if if you if you have some questions that doesn't fit in, into the schedule, please do type. Okay. With this, I would like to uh, invite next uh, speaker Amir Hadi Alisadi, um, uh, who will present uh, research on um, polymeric system. But unlike the previous one, it will be so-called conjugated polymer which uh, has some uh, specific properties. So, um, Amir, do you have uh, microphone enabled? Yes. Okay, so floor is yours. Um, we are looking forward to hear your talk. Thank you very much. Uh, hello all, I am Amir Hadi al Sadi, PhD student of civil engineering. Today I wanna to talk about uh, exploring the conductivity of the context of polymer via density functional theory. Uh, next, please. As you can see in the top left, conjugated polymer in this model uh, consists of the backbone uh, uh, and also uh, R group, which is a side chain. So one can uh, change this side chain length to regulate uh, some thermal and mechanical properties of these materials. Usually these materials are very interesting because uh, they are useful uh, because their behavior can be manipulated by some additives or uh, changing the side chain. Um, recently, uh, as you can see in the bottom figure, we uh, investigate the thermomechanical uh, of this polymer via coarse grain molecular dynamic simulation. Now we want to uh, explore the conductivity of this material uh, via quantum modeling and uh, density functional theory. Next, please. Uh, this is the uh, computational model that is defined here uh, yeah. this is the, uh, for this study. It uh, consists uh, of uh, two uh, monomers that uh, um, uh, com compose of a uh, um, dimer. And uh, for the side chain, we have C6 and C8. They are uh, alkyl group, means there is six uh, carbon, also eight carbon in each alkyl group. Next, please. And this is the snapshot of the molecular structure via VMD. Uh, this is the optimal geometry of the conjugated polymer model. Next, please. Uh, as uh, it is mentioned by Roger and also the Joff, and um, maybe most important uh, material that is available here is the density of a state and the absorption of the energy. As you know, for the semiconductor poly, uh, for the semiconductor materials, we expect to have a um, band gap between 0.1 and uh, 3. Usually this value is reported between 0.8, uh, according to my best knowledge, to 1.8 for the conjugated polymer models uh, with different uh, structure. Here uh, at the room temperature, uh, the band gap uh, is observed to 0.89 uh, electron volt for uh, this conjugated polymer model, as you can see in the top left figure. Also, uh, the top right uh, figure uh, show the absor spectrum absorption. 
uh, we expect from this uh, um, plot that the first peak should uh, fall into the band gap. Uh, and uh, as you can see, it's around 0 0.9 for this uh, polymer model. Next, please. Also, for this um, plot, uh, if uh, we have a momentum uh, dispersion for uh, frontier orbitals, uh, we can uh, extract some uh, important information from this plot. Uh, for instance, if we fit a parabolic function to each curve and uh, using the top right uh, formula, uh, one can easily uh, uh, measure the sub uh, gap that uh, is uh, near the zero, as it is uh, uh, highlighted in uh, blue and red uh, circles. Also, in the left uh, right column on the figure, the ME and MH, the uh, uh, mass of electron and mass of holes, is measured. And uh, the relative uh, values of ME are heavier than the MH. So one can uh, qualify that the current polymer system is a uh, hole conductor. Next, please. So in the coming slides, uh, we um, try to investigate the uh, charge of the density from the, again, uh, frontier orbitals, homo minus one to uh, lumo plus one. So for uh, this is for the orbital 311, uh, homo uh, minus one. As you can see, the maximum charge density appears on the oxidized uh, pyridine group. So this uh, localized state, as uh, you can see in the, the top figure, uh, this localized state is not uh, co uh, conductive because the charge is not uh, Uniform, uh, uniformly distributed. Next, please. But for the HUMO, the maximum charge density resides on the oxidized pyridine group. This is a substantial uh, density. Uh, there is a substantial density on each of the group. And as uh, it is clearly mentioned, this uh, uniform distribution of the charge means that this uh, decolized, delocalized conjugated state is capable for the conductivity. Next, please. Again, for the uh, homo orbital, uh, for, uh, for, sorry, for the lumo orbital, the maximum uh, charge density uh, here is on the oxygen, uh, oxygen from each uh, pyridine group. So uh, also, again, uh, similar to homo, there is a substantial density on each uh, tyrophene uh, and also pyridine group. So uh, the, again, this uh, charge density on each sulfur and uh, tyrophene group that is uniformly, uh, uniformly distributed means that this uh, state also, this delocalized conjugate state uh, is also conductive. Next, please. And finally, for uh, LUMO plus one, again, it is uh, uniformly distributed, but uh, not uh, uniformly. There is a delocalized charge, uh, which is uh, on the carbon in each uh, uh, group. But uh, this system may be partially conductive, not completely. Next, please. Also, uh, I uh, want to show some uh, brief results from the molecular dynamic at different temperature, as uh, other guys uh, discussed. Uh, for this conjugated polymer, we uh, compare the DOS from, uh, to, uh, for two different temperature. Uh, room temperature and also 100 Kelvin. And you can see by decreasing uh, the temperature from 300 to 100, there is an increase uh, in the band gap. That means that uh, a decrease in the conductivity. Uh, next, please. And uh, this is a representative video from the molecular dynamic, uh, if Dr. Killian play. This is a molecular dynamic at the room temperature, 300 Kelvin. Next, please. So the, that was the last slide. Uh, in this uh, study, we just uh, considered two single polymer with a constant uh, side chain length. But for the future study, I hope to um, continue this model uh, to, for instance, increasing the side chain length uh, to see how they affect the uh, conductivity of the system. Also, maybe uh, using the 
two driver in the system to increase a little system size uh, to get uh, maybe more uh, uh, reasonable results. But here we just wanted to study some uh, interesting feature of this semiconductor material. Thank you very much. Okay, let's thank uh, Amir Khazi for uh, and uh, the talk is open for discussion. Hi. Um, Hi you know, um, you know, very, you know it's, it's a nice, you know, classroom presentation. And um, on a technical note, I would add that, you know, when you deal with system like this, especially polymer, pay attention to one-to-one -one interactions. And in real calculation, you may have to include one-to-one -to -one interaction corrections because regular DFT calculation cannot handle that kind of interaction. So that's the technical issue. Another thing is I have a feeling that, you know, a lot of work rely on, you know, the value of band gap in order to interpret something. Like you, when you talk about conductivity, you know, you, you look at the band gap. But the band gap value is not relevant on the time. It depends on what kind of mechanism that you have for the electronic conduction. Let's say in the system, the conduction is through, you know, free carriers free holes or free electron, and yeah, the band gap value is very re relevant. But in some polymer system, the conduct conduction me mechanism is not through free carrier, but through, uh, let's say, like polaron hopping. You know, that's an, a different mechanism. And in that case, the band gap value is not relevant. Okay? What is more relevant in that case is the mobility of the polaron. So, I mean, it's just another comment that I want to add. Yeah. But, I mean, overall, it's a nice presentation. And, you know, I'm sure you, you guys learned a lot, you know, how to run the code, how to interpret the data from the calculation. I think it's a nice work. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you very much. I will try to uh, consider also your comments for the future study. This is just an initial uh, study in the quantum modeling. That was not my major, actually. But thank you for your comment. For sure, I will consider that. For future steps. Yeah, yes, I, I second that. Yeah, uh, like uh, Dr. Kang pointed out, uh, uh, the conductivity is not directly related to the band gap. Conductivity calculated with the, is the product of the um, concentration of the free uh, carries and the mobility of the, uh, of the uh, free carries. Okay, so after that, I, I have a question for you. So you mentioned you used the optimized geometry uh, for your simulation. So how did you do the optimization? I'm uh, interested. I didn't catch that. Sure. How did you do the uh, optimization for your poly po polymer material? Oh. So uh, we use the ab initio uh, approach to optimize the geometry at the room temperature using the VASP uh, software by uh, minimizing the energy of the system. Uh, how how big how big is the cell uh, cell is you used? How uh, how, the, uh, how 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 many uh, items or something like that? You, uh, you for, that for the current system, uh, there is two monomer uh, as a dimer, uh, so the total number of ions is two hundred fifty eight with oh. six hundred twenty four electrons for this system. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, if um, Amir will sh would show uh, one of his. Uh, Charge distribution, it shows size of um, his mm. unit cell in electrons. Uh, yeah, for, for instance, in the z direction, it's about 30 angstrom, as I think it is said. There are more questions typed in the in the chat room. So, uh, Amir, please um, uh, type the answers. There are important and, and interesting uh, questions, and uh, after we finish the session, I will try to share questions and answers with all participants. But uh, yeah. for the sake of time, let me invite everyone to thank uh, Amir once again. Thank you. So let's check if uh, Rebecca is uh, online. Yeah, can can you hear me? Yes, excellent. Uh, so next uh, presenter is uh, Roberta Thoman, and uh, um, let me bring up the fact that 
she is in the middle of her undergraduate uh, program and uh, she was very brave to uh, join in the pool with sharks uh, so to say with uh, graduate students but uh, uh, her presentation is on uh, gas sensors uh, based on uh, force in graphene so floor is yours yeah, so welcome to my presentation about holy graphene with embedded gold 13 cluster, which we propose can be used for gas sensing applications. Um, next slide, please. Um, first, I want to introduce the model that has been used. Um, holy graphene is formed by removing a large number of atoms from the graphene plane to produce holes. Um, a peri periodical model has been used to have the possibility to continue the model to a larger scale. Um, the edges of the hole have been function functionalized and a gold cluster of 13 gold atoms has been embedded in the hole. Um, holy graphene is known to have many advantages, including high surface area, high electrical um, conductivity, and thermal and chemical stability, which outperforms intact graphene layers, and that's why we focus on that. Next slide, please. I mean, in this work, we have looked into its applicability for hydrogen sulfide gas sensors, and which are commonly used in industry, primarily in oil refineries, wastewater facilities, oil and gas wells, and compressor stations. Um, there, it is important to keep track of the hydrogen sulfide concentration because it's a colorless toxic gas that causes adverse effect on the human body at low concentrations already. And the model has been modified, like the model from the previous slide, <laughs> has been modified by adding 25 hydrogen sulfide molecules above and 25 molecules beneath the whole graphene layer. And the computation has been performed by density functional theory that has is implemented in the VASP software and the PBE functional was used, and for visualization, we use VMD software. Next slide, please. And to start with the results, I would like to show the spin polarized density of states. Um, on the left side, you can see the model or the density of states for the model without gas and on the right side with the gas molecules. And on both models, you can see that there's no band cap, band cap, so the conduction band overlaps with the valence band. And in both cases, the model behaves as a conductor. And you can see when we add the hydrogen sulfide molecules, the energy of the HOMO shifts to higher energies and the states closer to the HOMO consist of lower energies, while lower occupied orbitals have higher energy compared to the model without hydrogen sulfide molecules. And the Fermi energy for the model without gas molecules is about minus 2.4 electron volts. And with gas molecules, it rises about 0.8 electron volts to minus 1.6 electron volts. And we expect this change to affect the conductivity of the model. Um, next slide, please. And then another observation is that when adding electrons to the system, the total energy decreases rapidly in the beginning and then slightly until reaching the minimum energy. And the model shows a minimal energy at the oxidation state of minus 22. That means the model is most stable when 22 
electrons are added to the system. And that means the system may attract negatively charged ions or and electron donating molecules, for example, OH minus. And withdrawing electrons leads to an increase in total energy. So this is very unlikely to happen. Next slide, please. Yeah, in the movie, you can see the molecule movement, and you can see that the hydrogen sulfide molecule is donating a hydrogen atom to the oxygen from the graphene hole. And in the next slide, please. Here are the snapshots from, from the movement. And so you can see that the bond between the sulfur and the hydrogen gets longer until the hydrogen bonds with the oxygen. And this is a very interesting transition, which will be subject of further investigation. And that leads us to the conclusion on the next slide, please. So we could show that um, holy graphene with gold clusters has potential to be used as a gas, se gas sensor for hydrogen sulfide gas. Um, further research will be conducted on electron donating mechanisms between the hydrogen sulfide molecules and functional groups on the graphene hole. How much the system attracts the negative charge could be compared to experimental data of zeta potentials of the model. And we could also see how different compositions of functional groups on the whole affect these. And all these may be possibilities to, en to enhance the sensor quality, which is the ultimate goal of this research. And thank you for your attention, and feel free to ask questions now. OK, let's well, thank Rebecca for interesting presentation. And the talk is open for, for discussion. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Rebecca, thank you. It was excellent, excellent work you're doing there. Um, so I have a very fundamental kind of question to give you uh, based where you're at in your undergrad studies. In your interactions of your sheet, your, your gold sheet there, you talked about the interactions of sulfur and hydride or hydrogen. And I noticed there was some pretty important information on that video you showed us. Your, can you comment on your bond lengths in interaction between each atoms on the type of interaction and if they compare it to experiment, if you can comment on that? On that. Do you mean that like the bond lengths between the sulfur and the hydrogen like gets longer until it breaks, it until it breaks. and then the bond is from the 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 What kind of interactions are happening here? And can you describe reasonably? Oh, this link here is something I could see an experiment, or I know this describes this or this kind of thing. If you can comment. Also, maybe because the oxygen is more electronegative, it attracts the partial positive hydrogen from the sulfur hydride. No, hydrogen sulfide. <laughs> there we go. And do you Hi, think those um, bonds yes. are reasonable? Oh, sorry. I'm... Uh, you can go ahead. OK, OK, I go ahead then. Um, oh, very simple question. OK, so you have graphene, and you did a hole in graphene, and then you put like gold cluster, right? Cluster. Are you sure that the gold cluster is going to stay there, or can you just fall apart? And how do we know if the gold cluster is stable, you know, on that graphene, you know? Um, so I think at this point, we are not 
sure about that. I mean, that was not subject of what I've been looking at. So that would be something we have to determine. To determine. Do I mean, yes, something that you can do. I mean, if you have time, you know, you can calculate the Biden energy or something. You know, you can calculate the Biden energy to see how much is the Biden energy, and based on the value of the Biden energy, you can you can say something about the stability of the system. So that's get an idea. Yeah. An idea. Yeah. Okay. Thank. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Can I can I ask a question to the people? Please. What is the stability? Stability of Please. what? Stability of gold cluster, stability of uh, uh, SH2 gas on the surface, or what kind of stability is uh, you are I talking I think about? the stability of the gold cluster in the graphene layer, like if that is stable, is that the question? Is that the question? Well, it was a question to the previous question, uh, to the actually to the person who was asking the question. Because his yes, comment I was, was talking about. Yes, I was talking about the stability. Sorry, I was talking about the stability of the gold cluster in graphene. So I mean, let's assume that the the gold cluster is already stable and has decent stability. So I mean, gold thirteen, you know, to my knowledge, is quite stable as an atomic cluster. So assume that we don't have to worry about that part. Now we should worry about whether you can hold that gold cluster in that piece of graphene because you have to do the hole and you put that you know cloak uh, you know gold cluster into that hole can that piece of graphene hold the gold cluster it's not the gold cluster it's not a question about stability at all because it's not the gold cluster is getting into the hole it is the salt of gold salt gold chloride salt is getting into the reaction oxidation reaction uh, oxidation redux reaction which actually growing as a nano crystal so it's a processes of growing nano crystal inside the uh, inside inside this hole it's not like the cluster is getting into the hole it's a cluster which is growing due to the some reactions through the exchange of the electrons because it's oxid uh, oxidation reduction reaction, exchange of electrons with the graphene layer, with the ages, and then the cluster is growing there. Because they do grow, they are stable because they see the results. So that's uh, why okay, uh, good. it's already okay, stable good. structure. But I think your question is very re uh, relevant because we don't know what's happening on the ages. What exactly uh, oxygen, they know that there are oxygens, they know that there are carbon bond and oxygen because this is what they see in the infrared spectra. So, we don't know what exactly happening on the ages when the reaction is done and when the cluster is formed. So probably trying different capping and seeing how this change the binding energy uh, would be would be of course uh, a good idea to go. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I have a very quick question. So, so you, you you showed that POS change, change when you uh, when you have um, uh, molecules added to uh, your, your your material. So so my question is actually you didn't mention what is the role of the gold thirteen. So my question is that if you don't use gold, just use graphene. Uh, did you can you estimate uh, if the DOS will also change when you add uh, like uh, hydro hydrogen uh, sulfide onto the graphene only? Wait, could you repeat that, please? Very quick, I didn't uh, get that. You only use a uh, 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 graphing with, uh, with gold 30, just if you only consider the DOS density of states, uh, states of the graphene. Now you add the hydrogen uh, sulfide uh, molecules, on, uh, uh, you, you can insert, yeah, suppose you insert the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen sulfide into the graphene. No, there's no, there's no gold 13. 30. So do you, do you think of the DOS, oh, DOS, no, the graph? Mm. Also, I, the model I showed in the second slide, I just added, like, we just added the uh, hydrogen sulfide molecule above and beneath that, but there's still the gold cluster inside. Is that your question? Yeah, my question is that if you only use graphene, yeah, all you only use graphene and study the DOS, that's the state. That's the state. Did you get it? No, I have the graphene with the gold cluster and the hydrogen. 
Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, thank you. There thank is you. a suggestion to introduce a reference point, right? Right? Okay, but, so, what did you um, say? I didn't get what you said, Dmitri. Dmitri, we couldn't oh. hear what you said before. Oh. What did you say before? It was cut out. Okay. Professor Tiffan Zhao. Oh, you mean, you mean, okay. So my question is because I, 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 we, we didn't see what is the rule of the gold 13 in the material. So if we don't use gold, we only use graphene yeah, with, with the hydrogen sulfide uh, molecules. How about the DOS, the density of state of the graphene? Does it change as well? If we only use the graphene, I mean, of, of course it was, would change, but we use the gold cluster because the graphene is very sensitive to like me, um, metal atoms and metal clusters con regarding its conductivity. So we, so it's more sensitive to changes in the conductivity that we can measure with the gas molecule. Yes, so, molecule. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, so um, let me invite everyone to thank uh, Rebecca once again. So, uh, Rebecca, please type answers if you see additional questions in the chat line. And now uh, let me in. Um, so. Who is not speaking, please mute the microphones. And uh, let me invite the stage um, Salim Abdul Thomas, who will uh, share uh, some simulations on uh, small model systems uh, relevant to perovskite quantum dots. Salim? Yes. Hello. Can, can anyone, can, can you guys hear me? OK. So uh, <clears throat> today my presentation is going to be about the emission of uh, manganese doped lead halide perovskite quantum dots. And uh, also I'm going to share two concepts, which are uh, crystal field splitting and uh, spin orbit coupling. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, next slide, okay. Uh, so what are perovskite quantum dots? Uh, perovskite quantum dots are uh, quantum dots or nanocrystals uh, having uh, the structure shown uh, at the top right uh, image. And this structure was uh, named after uh, the mineralogist who found this structure, Lev Perovsky. And so uh, it has a formula of uh, ABX3, where A is the monovalent uh, uh, organic cation, which is uh, shown at the, at the green, uh, as the green uh, <clears throat> in, in, the, in, the, in the image there, which also can, can be replaced by uh, an organic cation. And B is the metal cation, which is the center of the octahedral sites in the image. And, uh, and we have the, uh, the halide anions, which are uh, the red ones. Uh, at the at the edges of the of the octahedral sites, and so they are very important uh, nanocrystals um, because I mean they they offer they, they offer a lot of uh, important optoelectronic properties, uh, including uh, high quantum yield photoluminescence, and uh, that can be used in 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 variety of applications, including including LEDs and uh, solar cells. And they also offer a high degree of uh, tunability by mixing halide anions, but uh, they still uh, they still have uh, problems with because they are unstable in, in moisture. So uh, a good uh, solution for that would be the doping of the of the material, and uh, the doping is basically introducing a small degree of impurity to improve the the, the properties. So this will enhance the photo. Uh, the optoelectronic properties and and make the the nanocrystal stable as well, and uh, manganese is actually a good dopant for uh, for this type of nano of nanocrystals. And at the bottom right, you can see uh, emissions. Uh, this is a photoluminescence uh, spectrum for uh, for a doped uh, lead halide perovskite quantum dots, 
and uh, we can see two uh, two peaks uh, in in blue of course in blue because the red one is the absorption and we're going to focus only on the blue one so the emission and we can see the two peaks the first one around 400 nanometer which uh, experimentally uh, which experimentally was measured and the four, that, that peak uh, represents the the emission from the perovskite uh, quantum dot and the second peak at uh, 8 uh, 800 uh, no so, sorry 600 around 600 nanometer represents the emission from the manganese uh, uh, coming from the manganese next slide please <clears throat> So manganese uh, is a metal ion uh, having five unpaired uh, valence electrons in the d orbital, and um, so these electrons uh, have uh, uh, orbitals looking like the one, sh uh, the, the 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 first image shown at the top, where we have uh, the, the, where we can see the orbital lobes for the five electrons in 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 that orbital, and. Uh, in the perovskite lattice, uh, these halide anions, which in our case we used uh, a chloride, chlor chlor chlorine, chlorine, Cl minus, which is considered as point charges because they are negatively charged, right? And then they are going to create this uh, uh, columbic environment and react, and, and 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 especially in the two first orbitals that we can see there, the the uh, x squared minus y squared and then the dz squared which are which are directly on these axes where where uh, where these point charges will be so they will have a higher higher uh, energy than the other ones which are not directly which where, where the lobes are not directly on the axis where where these uh, point charges will be so these two first one actually will will be have will have a higher energy than the three other ones, and then this is called orbital. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 crystal ligand field theory or crystal field splitting. So these 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 five electrons in the, in the d orbital would be separated into two groups, where uh, where uh, two of them would have higher energy and three of them would be a bit lower. But all of them overall, they will have a higher energy than 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 when the manganese atom is is or ion is is, is in vacuum. So that's 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 what, that's what you can see in the top right yeah. image. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Uh, upon excitation, uh, upon excitation, also the second uh, the second uh, concept that I will discuss here is is, is uh, upon excitation, uh, the the electrons revolving around the nucleus can create a magnetic field. That will affect that will affect uh, their intrinsic intrinsic spin and allow the electron to flip and become uh, a, 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 a bit of beta spin component and then this is called spin orbit coupling and then this will be important to know because this is this is going to allow the 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 photoluminescence wavelength to 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 redshift and uh, let's next slide. <clears throat> So the model used here uh, are uh, models of 88 atoms, including carbon, chlor uh, chlorine, chlor chlorine, hydrogen, nitrogen, and uh, lead. And in the case of the DOP model, we used uh, three atoms of lead and one uh, of manganese. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, DFT calculations using VASP software were used to extract the uh, the lower energy configuration uh, during the geometry optimization, and uh, compute the spin polarized density of state, the par uh, and also uh, the par partial density, uh, partial density orbitals, or par partial charge density orbitals. Yeah, and uh, and I measured also the bond distances and angles, and I also want to note that uh, n up down is defined as the uh, as the difference in total number of alpha electrons minus beta electrons. It's going to be relevant in future talks, in future yeah, slides. Uh, the next slide, please. So here in the data table after uh, <clears throat> uh, geometry optimization, uh, the total energy of uh, the undoped model 
which is shown at the left, is uh, minus 425, and then the other two uh, total energies after energy uh, 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 geometry optimization was also included in the in the dope model for the dope model, and then the dope model uh, uh, after being excited. So in the first data table, we can see uh, uh, kind of like uh, the energies are the same, right, for uh, for different bands. So the, the energy of the of the bands are, are are the same, and the occupations are also the same, which would translate in a in very similar density of states plots uh, that we will see next. And then in the second one, we can see that uh, n up down is equals to five because uh, from uh, 132 to 136 in the one that's yellow from 132 from two to 126 we have uh, occupation in the alpha uh, 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 spin orbital but then no occupation in the beta spin orbital that that, 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 that would be directly connected to to manganese uh, contribution of the five uh, electrons in, in in the d orbital which are having higher energy and then in the third one, we have uh, uh, three extra electrons in the alpha orbital that are absent in the beta orbital for the same, I mean, talking about occupation-wise. And that would be due to the electron, uh, uh, one electron allowed to to flip its state, its state and then become uh, negative, uh, I mean, beta orbital. And so, yeah, well, we have five of them. One of them is going to, to, to flip and then be with another one that's already alpha, and then the three other ones are the extra alphas that, that are not included into beta. And next slide, please. So uh, for the UNDOP model, yes, like as we expected, the, there is a very similar density of state plots. Here we can see uh, uh, the one alpha at the top and then and, and beta spin orbitals at the at the bottom with the valence band at the left and then conduction band at the right and also uh, uh, we can see uh, from the pictures of the orbitals uh, the two the uh, orbitals uh, localized at the at the at the chlor chlorine ion and then at the lead uh, lead ion uh, for the lumo uh, uh, for lumo orbital and also here the band gap was measured to be around 3.5 electron volts which would uh, correspond to to an emission of around uh, 354 nanometer which uh, which is which is close to the to the experimental uh, graph that I showed in the introduction and that's around uh, 400 nanometer Next slide please So for the dope model at the ground state, uh, we can see that uh, this symmetry is uh, is not uh, is not present. So we have uh, these five electrons contributed from the manganese, which uh, are having a higher energy. This is represented by the, the 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 higher like the three last peaks in the in the in the alpha valence band. The three last peaks that we have there, uh, the one we can see that is, is, is not uh, symmetrical, and then the two extra ones that are having higher energy. And uh, so here uh, we also uh, uh, um, confirmed the, the the orbitals by looking at the by looking at Homo alpha minus four until uh, Homo alpha to confirm uh, the the orbitals that were expected uh, by the manganese uh, by the manganese uh, uh, ion electrons in the in the in the d orbitals <clears throat> so here we let's consider two scenarios when where uh, n opton is equals to 5 when uh, excited so if it is equals to 5 uh, after excitation uh, the band gap uh, will would still be if you look at the lumo alpha the difference between lumo alpha and lumo and uh, and, and HOMO alpha, it would still be around 3.5, and that would correspond to a, a, an emission in, in, in the blue, I mean, the blue light emission that we, we saw around 400 nanometer. But then if the electron is allowed to flip, and then, I mean, if it's allowed to flip itself after excitation, means this electron uh, from HOMO alpha would be promoted into LUMO beta. 
and uh, if it's if it happens if it does happen right uh, uh, it's going to be uh, yeah at, at Lumo Beta and then the difference between the, the band gap or the difference between the Homo uh, uh, Lumo Beta and uh, and the Homo Alpha would be around the three, two point uh, uh, two point five or something like that and that would be uh, uh, confirming a redshift of, of, of the of the photoluminescence uh, wavelength. Which is which would be around 600 nanometer or yes, which around 600 nanometer and and and, and that was shown in the experimental uh, graph that I, I showed in the introduction. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so in the excited state, after we computed the density of uh, after we plotted the density of states, the spin polarized density of states, we can see. Well, first of all, what I saw was uh, was the the the, the the, the spin the spin flip which uh, which can be seen here uh, that that we have uh, an electron in the homo uh, uh, beta right that that that's uh, that's uh, that's the that's the the transition between the the homo alpha to the lumo beta the previous one and um, but here uh, I, I there's a lot of of things that I that were not very 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 much sure so because uh, i see that the the lumo alpha here is is has having less energy than the homo beta and and everything i would have expected something closer to the to the previous one but uh, i conf i i, I try to compare the, the 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 orbitals the orbitals with the with the the density of states and and, and the energies to to confirm that the the to confirm the the, the, the the orbitals are contributed by the manganese ion electrons in, in in the d orbitals and we can see here that the homo homo alpha minus 2 is having the uh, that uh, d z square i believe and uh, yes uh, it wasn't uh, wasn't very sure so so after that what i what we did is 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 uh, measure the bonds and the angles of uh, of the of uh, of the chlorine chlorine man manganese chlorine and next slide please uh, so here i mean in the previous slide also the the, the band gap was very 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 small was uh, was very small which which would uh, uh, which would ex uh, which would translate into into a, a, a pl of, of, of close to 1000 nanometer which is not what we expected so what i did was the measured burn distance and the angles and to understand if something happened during the the geometry optimization or or, or something like that so what i what we noticed is that uh, is that the, uh, in the first one in the phone to the left uh, we the angles were measured and, and and they were very different than 90 degrees which is the configuration for the octahedral uh, uh, configuration and different to 0.5 to like about 110 degrees and to the right one I measure uh, the angle uh, the distances the bond distances were, were measured and then we see that the four closest uh, nearest neighbors were around uh, 2.3 and but then after that we have another uh, chlorine ion which is 3.6 I'm strong the way I'm strong the way, and then 4.6, which is even further. So it looks like it 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 kind of became tetrahedral during the geometry optimization, maybe. So um, and next slide, please. So there is also a tetrahedral kind of uh, there is also the tetrahedral split, so uh, ligand field uh, uh, splitting that ha that can also happen when. Uh, when the 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 point charges or the ligands are attached, but not in the same in the same uh, axes as uh, as the, the the orbital lobes that the orbital lobes are, so this 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 would create also I mean it, it would still create this columbic uh, uh, environment, but uh, the splitting would happen dif the, the differently. So in this case, we're going to have three, actually, uh, the, the three, three uh, uh, electrons orbital, the three electrons, yeah, the three electrons would go uh, 
uh, would be at higher energy than the than the two of them that were supposed to be at higher energy in the octahedral split. But then here also the energy uh, the energies is not uh, they're not as high as the octahedral one because of course as the as the orbital I mean, I mean as the lobes are closer to where where the the point charges are there will be higher higher uh, energies there will be higher energies coming from the Coulombic interactions and. Um, so uh, to be able to understand uh, or to understand the excitation, uh, we use a more reliable assessment, which is the energy difference, which is just the delta energy uh, in the total total energies of the of the ground of the ground state of the dog model and the excited state of the dog model. So we did the difference, and then it corresponded to a gap, uh, uh, to a band gap of around 1.67, which is uh, which corresponds to emission of about 700 42 nanometers. Which is uh, very, very, which is closer, closer to uh, to the to the to the to the emission. Uh, uh, so to the emission that we saw uh, experimentally. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so in conclusion, we we understand that perovskite quantum dots quantum, quantum dots has uh, have many applications due to their. Uh, of the electronic properties of uh, high quantum yield, high color purity, and uh, so we we did the geometry optimization, spin polarized and steel state, partial charge densities using the the DFT with Comsham equations, and uh, we also saw we also saw octahedral and tetrahedral split, and spin orbit coupling as well, and we extracted the 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 energy and we confirmed the, that the PL was uh, Actually, uh, that the photoluminescence was redshifted, and uh, yes, that was all. Thank you very much. And if there is any questions, I would be happy to answer. Okay, please join me in thanking uh, Salim and uh, the presentation question. for for discussion and questions. Yes. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Yes. Professor Fan. Okay. So. Did you really include spin orbit interaction in your calculations? Because when I look at the density of state, you're talking about the alpha channel and beta channel, as mean you're talking about a spin up and spin down. But if you turn yes. on spin orbit interaction, yes, no spin up and spin down anymore, because you know, with the inclusion of spin orbit interaction, spin up and spin down do not make any sense anymore. So did you really turn on spin orbit interaction? Or you just turn on spin uh, polarization? No. That's, they, they are two different uh, things. It, it was just a spin, polar, uh, a spin polarization, but uh, we just changed the n, uh, the number of, uh, I mean, the difference between the alpha, alpha orbitals and the beta orbitals to be three, just to include, just to, uh, just to include this possibility of, uh, of, uh, of uh, or just to force the system to have one, to have to have uh, instead of five extra electrons contributed by manganese to have just three, and this is what we I believe was used as as. So so can you confirm that you turn on spin polarization only, not spin orbit interaction? So in your calculation, yes, it's a spin polarized calculation, not spin orbit. Yes. Calculation. Okay. Yes, yes, it's been yeah, all right. Have to be clear yes. about that one. Yes, but yeah, because there, there has to be extra com uh, extra computations that have to be done to include the actual interactions of uh, for spin uh, orbit coupling. Yes, thank you. More more questions. I do see there are some uh, questions typed in the chat line. Are there any questions to to be asked uh, um, verbally? I am also curious to question by Dr. Kalina. <laughs> okay, uh, so the question is they're saying, uh, what is the reason to act, uh, to act to add man manganese doping to the perovskite? Uh, it's because it's, uh, it adds um, stability uh, that, that the perovskite quantum that, quantum that didn't have with uh, without doping, and also uh, to allow for... Uh, uh, you mean optical stability? Yes, yes, and also yes, optical stability, and also to allow for a, a shift of, I mean, a, a, 
uh, change of the band gap to allow the change of, uh, of the emission as well, because I, I understand that with changing size, uh, the, the PL can change or the photoluminescence can change, but then we reach a limit where we reach the band gap limit. So we need different, we need doping to, to allow for, for further changes. <clears throat> In your spectra, how does your optical stability change? How does the optic So to the extent you said it, it does really good with stability. Could you elaborate a little bit more? Well, maybe I don't uh, think we that, have a higher peak. I don't think that you can talk about stability uh, just looking on the calculations because optical stability means that there is no bleaching, so no blinking. Uh, yes. lifetime. So it's a time dependent processes. And of course, calculations do not have any time dependence uh, in this case. So yes. for sure, we're not able to answer this question because, uh, uh, because, because again, the simulations do not have this specific feature to show how this really changes with time. Yes, and also uh, experiments. Yes, experiment experiments were done, and 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 we observed bleaching uh, in in that uh, in the undoped in the undoped uh, nanocrystal, where the PL where the PL peak would actually drop, and then the quantum yield will actually drop as well. But with uh, with the with the dopant, if after a very long time, it, it's still it's still stable, and it's still showing a very high. It's still showing uh, the same quantum yield that that were measured before. Thank you. Okay, please uh, join me in thanking Salim uh, once again for a very interesting presentation and for thank uh, you. Yep, and we we do have uh, 21 minutes for three presentations more. Um, so if uh, next presenters are not happy, uh, complain to previous speakers. And uh, the the next presenter is Yang Chao Liao, who will uh, tell a story about carbon nanotubes with uh, dopings. Uh, Yang Chao, do you have microphone on? We do not hear you. Okay, if Yang Chao uh, doesn't uh, appear, uh, let's uh, check if. Uh, Stephen is uh, ready. The speaker number seven is uh, ready to present. Uh, Stephen, are you online? Yes. Okay. So then uh, we postpone uh, Yang Chao for later and uh, let's go with presentation by uh, Stephen uh, Westra, who is uh, going into new directions uh, of. Um, Mm, catalytic chemical processes. Okay, floor yes. is yours. Thank you. So, uh, like Dr. Killen said, my uh, project was on the catalytic ability of a certain ruthenium compound in its ability to uh, possibly oxidize water for use in chemical synthesis. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, just to answer some questions off the bat, uh, this was simulated by creating models first in uh, Gaussian simulation software and then taking those models and using VASP uh, to calculate it using uh, the density functional theory, densional, density functional theory and uh, the calculations basis for this is the Kahn-Sham equation, which assumes that you have a set of non-interacting one equated electron orbitals, and that by calculating twice, you can uh, account for a full two electron orbital. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, from here, left to right, we can see the uh, three forms that were studied in this uh, on the left, we have a hydride or hydrate form where we have a water molecule acting as a ligand onto the base, uh, basic ligand. And then in the middle, we have a uh, hydroxide form where it's been oxidized once and lost one uh, proton. And then on the right, we have uh, the oxide form where the oxygen has been fully 
uh, stripped of protons and is bound directly to the ruthenium. Uh, next slide, please. So looking at this slide, we can see as the charge changes from each, uh, with the total number of electrons of each molecule, uh, those terms on the side, for example, stand for ruthenium ligand, and then a two-letter abbreviation for their uh, the form the oxygen is taking. We can see that there's a dramatic drop in the level of uh, total energy at the uh, plus two and plus three charges, and then again at uh, plus four and plus five. But primarily what we uh, have uh, focused on in this occasion is the plus two charge of the ruthenium hydride ligand, hydrate ligand, sorry. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, looking here, we have a visualization of the homo and lumo of the uh, ligand. And what we can see here is that uh, they are primarily centered around uh, the ruthenium atom and the oxygens of the uh, phosphite group that's attached onto one of the uh, organic portions of the ligand. And so this is uh, interesting is that it's very likely some sort of hybridization possibly happening. As uh, we will discuss later, we found that the, uh, the reaction to remove and oxidize water occurred very rapidly under uh, some rather non-controversial conditions and the uh, it appeared that the phosphite group there which played a significant role in affecting how it happened uh, next slide please so this is really the key of uh, the entire presentation is a uh, combined uh, dos diagram along with each of the orbitals that are representing. And what we can see here is that the uh, the LUMO is very, very close to the HOMO in comparison to the uh, LUMO plus one. And this is obviously something that you want to see when you're working with a ligand, not a, as it, with a catalyst, as the ability to uh, interchange between the, uh, the conductance band and the observation band that you see with a very small band gap is very critical to being able to successfully uh, successfully make a uh, usable uh, catalyst as without it, you will not be able to uh, freely interconvert uh, between the different forms of the intermediaries of the reaction in an efficient manner. Next slide. So this is looking at the uh, hydrate ligand form uh, over a series of seconds. We can see that the on the left, the phosphite is interacting quite strongly, pulling away the uh, protons from the water molecule and very uh, effectively helping to sort of break that bond between them and encourage the reaction of uh, breaking the the bond in oxidizing the water that we see there. And then, then uh, due to the change in the electronic structure from now being protonated, the, uh, the whole phosphite group shifts away from the rest of the uh, catalyst molecule. Next slide. So this is uh, a short video or movie of showing what exactly we're seeing in that last slide. And you can see that it's very strongly pulling away that uh, proton from the water molecule onto that phosphide group and away from the center of the, uh, of the catalyst and thus promoting the uh, development of the hydra the hydroxide form over the hydrate form. Next. So, uh, questions, please. Okay, uh, please join me in thanking uh, Stephen uh, for interesting presentation. Uh, 
dying. And the talk is uh, open for discussion. I do apologize for the kind of bare bones nature of it. I haven't had much time to really thoroughly flesh it out due to the uh, restrictions of scheduling. I do have a question. Can you hear yes. me? Okay. So my yes. question is, you have, uh, you have shown that water molecule is coordinated very strongly to the ruthenium center and then losing one of the hydrogens. Uh, does it mean that actually it contaminates the, uh, cat uh, the catalytic agent? Because my understanding then, since if, if, if OH, now you have really OH group, which is very strongly interacting with ruthenium, so it will never get out. And then, and then the whole complex will be not working anymore as a, as a catalyst. Am I right? Uh, well, that could certainly be a concern. However, uh, other research onto similar molecules for organic uh, synthesis has shown that it is in fact possible to remove hydroxide groups off of uh, ruthenium complexes uh, similar to this uh, for effective synthesis. And so that's not uh, a particularly high concern, although it is a possibility. Thanks. So. Just was curious. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yes. So it's it's quite strongly coordinated now, but it also lacks anything else that it can coordinate to apart from that. <clears throat> okay, um, so Stephen, please look for the typed questions. There were quite a few and answer them by typing. Uh, let's thank uh, Stephen once again for a nice uh, and interesting presentation. And now we need to squeeze uh, two remaining presentations in the 10 minutes. So, uh, Yang Chao, I will Hello. be very uh, strict on uh, um, five minutes uh, limit. So, for okay. yours. Uh, can you hear me, everybody? Okay, so, okay, so my name is Yang Chao Niao. So, in today's presentation, I'm going to talk about my term project, that is atomic modeling of em uh, emission properties of carbon nanotubes. So next, please. So in today's presentation, I'm going to talk about three kind of topics. The first one is sentient models, and the second one is results and discussion, and the third one is conclusion. So next, please. So for my uh, models, as you can see from the table one, the, uh, it contain uh, it uh, it have three kind of um, atom types. Uh, uh, the first one is uh, carbon. It have um, 94 carbon atoms, and the second one is uh, hydrogen. Uh, they have seven uh, hydrogen atoms, and the a third one is a uh, uh, nitrogen. So they have um, they just have one um, nitrogen atom, and, and as you can see from the figure uh, A, this is the initial state of, of of my system, and the figure B is the final state of the system. So my objective of of, of this project is to study the the uh, energy, the density of the states, and the uh, absorption uh, 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 spec spectrum of the system at these two different static stages. So next, please. And uh, so, uh, firstly, I studied the density of states of the of, of the system when it considered the uh, when it uh, didn't consider the spin polymerized uh, calculation. As you can see from the figure uh, two. Uh, the band gap of the initial state is much larger than the final state, and compared uh, with the initial state, the density of states of the final state has obvious overlapping phenomenon. Okay, next, please. I also studied the uh, um, absorption spectrum of the system at two different stages, and as you can see from the figure, the absorption spectrum of the initial state uh, have a distinct peak before 4.5 electron watt. And the absorption spectrum of the final states have, ha, has no obvious peak, but just uh, gradually decreases to zero before 4.5 electron watt. And the absorption spectrum are zero after uh, 4.5 electron watt for both stages. So next, please. Then I studied the uh, Orbitals of of the system at these two different stages, as you can see from the figure, uh, figures uh, I and B. This is the orbitals of the system um, for the initial stage, and the figures C and D is the orbitals uh, um, of the of uh, final stage. 
and we can find that the homo and the normal orbitals are mainly located, you know, at the uh, CNT structures for the initial states. But for the phylo states, the homo and the normal orbitals are mainly uh, localized at the uh, lateral chain atom. So the homo atom for the initial state is distri uh, distri distributed uh, along the x direction, uh, along the z, z direction, as you can see from the figure A. And the normal orbital is distributed at the um, angle of, uh, of positive and negative 120 degrees uh, to the uh, uh, z, uh, z direction, as you can see from the uh, figure A. This is the uh, uh, conclusion for the, you know, for the uh, of initial stage of the system. Next, please. And then I also studied the orbitals of the system when it uh, rotated up about um, uh, um, 90 degrees uh, uh, or, um, along the XY plane. And as you can see from the figure, the homo orbitals and the normal orbitals of the uh, initial states are mainly located at the uh, CNT structures. And the homo and the normal orbitals of the phyllo states are mainly located at the hydrogen atom. Next, please. So, so then I also studied the density of states of the system when it considered the spin polarized calculation. So, uh, as you can see from the figures I, C, E, this is the orbitals of the system um, for the initial state, and the figures B, D, F is the um, orbitals of the system for the uh, final state. And uh, I want to mention that is uh, uh, N up down. Uh, this means uh, uh, this is used to set a difference between the number of electrons in the uh, up and the down spin component. Um, next, please. And uh, um, first, we can find that uh, there is no obvious um, uh, bend gap for the final state, and there is uh, there have obvious uh, bend gap for the uh, initial state. And uh, the family level of the initial state just falls within the gap in the spin up bend, which indicating that uh, uh, the system system have a semi uh, conduct uh, properties. And the family level of the final state just falls before the gap in the spin up band, which means uh, the system has the um, um, metallic properties. Next, please. And lastly, I studied the energies of the system when, uh, and, uh, for these two different static stages. And as you can say, um, the, as you can say, the impact of in up down our energies at the final state is significantly greater than that of um, uh, the influence in the initial state. And the changes of energy gap for the up and down spin components are basically constant. Next, please. So in conclusion, uh, in my project, I studied uh, I, I studied um, in, uh, you know in the in the energies, the density of states, and the hum humor and the normal orbitals of the system um, uh, based on the WASPA uh, software package. And uh, in the future, I think the absorption spectral and the orbitals of the central late feather study when considering the uh, spin calculation. Next, please. So last but not least, I want to say thanks to Professor Dimitri and the uh, Department of Chemistry and uh, Biochemistry for this wonderful uh, course. And I also want to say thanks to all my classmates um, for accompanying me uh, through this uh, semester. And I also want to acknowledge the support from the uh, WASP, WMD, and uh, Gaussian View and Miller Lab for my uh, project. Okay, thank you. Okay, please join me in, in uh, thanking Yang Chao Liao. Um, so, Yanko, please explore uh, questions in the chat room uh, because okay. we need to give uh, Mahek a uh, uh, chance to present. And uh, I would like to make a comment that what is presented as a final is seems like an intermediate uh, state because one of the nitrogen to hydrogen bonds is too elongated and it may create uh, trap states inside of the gap. But your results for what you call initial seems uh, reasonable. Okay. So um, um, please look for uh, questions in the in the chat room. Um, I apologize that we didn't uh, have time to go over detailed discussion. So let's thank uh, Yang Chia once again. Thank you very much. And uh, the next uh, presenter is Mahek Sadik, um, who will. Um, explore applications of this uh, materials to of this of the course materials to um, 
bio-related uh, objects. Mahik, are you online? Yes, um, can you hear me? Yes. So um, I am Mehek Sadiq, and um, my project is based on the impact of Fe2 plus aqua complex on peroxidized lipid bilayer. Next slide, please. First of all, what is a lipid bilayer? It's a membrane surrounding the a cell to protect the contents of the cell, and it must remain undamaged anyhow to protect the normal cellular and a normal human body activity. So it consists of two parts, hydrophilic, hydrophilic polar heads, that is made up of phosphate group, choline, glycerol backbone, and hydrophobic non-polar fatty acid tail made of carbon backbone and hydrogen. Next slide, please. You can go on to the next slide. So before, um, so for my work is based on lipid peroxidation and it, and sustaining this lipid peroxidation. First of all, what is lipid peroxidation? It is the oxidative degradation of the lipid bilayer and removal of electrons, external radical, ultimately damaging the cell and lysis of the cells. Lysis of the cell means uh, death of the cell. And we usually do not want it, but, but why do we need it? We need it in case of cancer. When we want to kill the, um, uh, the abnormal cells, uh, from the human body uh, to stop the mutation and metastasis. And we also need it in case of elimination of virus infected cells. So when uh, uh, the in when a cell is, cell membrane is peroxidized, what happens is that it uh, triggers apoptosis. And how is apoptosis triggered? Uh, cell contains, uh, a cell contains mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. When, once when the cell membrane is damaged, the external foreign the foreign particles enter into the mitochondrial membrane, ultimately uh, 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 removing the barrier function of the mitochondria, initiating cell death. And in this way, the infected cells can be removed from the normal healthy human body. Next slide, please. So um, normally peroxidation can be done using um, hydrogen peroxide, but I want to focus on iron and peroxidation reaction. Why? Because uh, the reason behind uh, focusing on iron is, okay, I'll explain it. First of all, iron is a transition metal and it promotes lipid peroxidation in two ways. First way which I'm not focusing on is it, uh, uh, it speeds up the reaction between hydrogen peroxide and lipid bilayer acting as a catalyst. But I'm focusing on the second portion that is it composes the preformed lipid peroxide, propagate new lipid peroxidation reaction. Next slide, please. So uh, what I'm using is reduced iron complex, Fe2+. So what it does is that when we have a preformed lipid peroxide, the iron 2 uh, complex reacts with that lipid peroxide generating alkoxy radical made up of carbon hydrogen uh, connected to oxygen, that is alkyl plus oxygen. And these, what these radical, alkoxy radical do is that initiate new peroxidation reactions. They attack new uh, normal lipid peroxides and uh, initiate new peroxidation reactions by redox recycling of these metal ions. And thus a chain reaction is sustained. Next slide, please. So the software that uh, I uh, you, used here is GOSU 09 jmo 8 Vienna app initial simulation package VASP visual molecular dynamics to view the output and a video Mac to view the uh, movie. Next slide, please. So the lipid bilayer that I focused working on is one palmotyl, two arachidonyl, S and phosphocholine. So from uh, so uh, this is the structure of the PAPC. I didn't be, I didn't make it because I uh, built the structure of a peroxidized lipid bilayer. That's on the next slide. Next slide, please. So um, what I made is peroxidized PAPC, that is 1 palmitoyl, 2 9 oxo, nano anoil, essen glycerol, 3 phosphocholine, a monomer of this. So here are the gray atoms represent carbon, the white atoms hydrogen, the red atoms oxygen, the orange one there is phosphorus, and the blue one is nitrogen. This is the structure of Cox no PC. Next slide, please. So 
that was the structure of the oxidized PAPC molecule, but um, I, exter I added iron Fe2 plus aqua complex surrounding that Poxno PC2 to uh, view the reaction between the external radical and the monomer. So the the, the molecules that we see outside, the red and orange one, it's actually um, the Fe2 plus aqua complex surrounding the Poxno PC monomer. Next slide, please. So the equations that were used here are the Consham equation to view the electronic structure and to calculate the uh, density uh, or total density of the structure that uh, uh, fixtures density of the structures that I built. And another equation is was for the electronic density of the states to view the electronic density at various um, intervals. And uh, so these two equations were of importance. Next slide, please. So first, uh, after building this um, whole structure and um, optimizing it in VASP, um, and then uh, I heated the molecule, I heated the structure in two ways. First of all, I heated it to 300 Kelvin, but no difference was observed. So then I heated it again to 1500 Kelvin, and a significant difference was observed in the bonds. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So uh, we can see the change of bonds in, of this structure and the interaction between the external radical and the monomer mm -hmm. in this video. So we can see that bonds between the iron complex is reacting with the monomer, so which is what I really wanted to observe. That does it initiate new peroxidation reactions or not? If it does react, then it will initiate new alkoxy radicals, initiating new peroxidation reaction. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So this is the density of states plot. So the top one uh, indicates the density of state plot before heating and the bottom one after heating. So we can see that there is no band gap. And yes, I did observe that there, the band gap difference was hardly of 0.2 e electron volts. So yeah, so I can we can see that the shift of electrons from the valence band to conduction band, but there is no uh, band gap here. Um, Next slide, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, please join me in uh, thanking Mahek for interesting presentation. So it was a very brave attempt to uh, consider complicated biological biological uh, object. Are there any uh, quick questions if you are not getting disconnected? Can I go ahead? Yes, please. OK, so very simple question. Um, is iron you know, really stable as iron 2 plus in your calculation? So because you mentioned iron 2 plus, how can you be sure that you, know, you really have iron 2 plus in your calculation? Is there a way to check it? Yeah, uh, so uh, first of all, I did uh, uh, read in various places that iron 2 plus is present in the human body, but in connected uh, like as ferritin, as non heme, as non heme iron. So, uh, so it, it is bounded with other structures. For example, it is bounded with protein. So, if it is removed, so my actual observation, what I wanted to observe is that, it, like, does iron react with this structure? So yes, um, iron does, uh, when heated, iron can be removed as Fe2 plus from that molecular structure. And it can further, and if it is removed, then it can ultimately react with the uh, monomer or bi uh, bilayer of phospholipid. Yeah, but if it's true, you should be able to see it in your calculation, right? When you look at the outcome file of your VAS calculation, look at the calculated local magnetic moment, you should be able to see if you really have iron 2 plus or not. Send me an email if you know more, want, want to know more about it. Yeah, I think All right. Yes. All right. All right. Professor Huang is likely asking about balancing total charge and removing as many uh, electrons, as many positive charges are on iron, 
or by pro, um, setting up counter ions to to balance charge. Okay. But, oh yes, but, I. I okay, it. so um, we can get uh, disconnected. Uh, let me um, um, suggest that we complete all uh, presentations. Um, I plan to share the um, um, chat line with everyone. And uh, if you need, if you're a presenter, you may just copy paste chat line for future improvements. Um, all presenters uh, get um, um, substantial credit uh, for, for, for this, that uh, the final grades should be, you should be satisfied with them. And uh, let me thank once again um, all speakers for a tremendous amount of work in addition to standard uh, class activity. So it was a lot of um, initiative to spend days and nights in uh, running com 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 computational jobs. And uh, let me also thank uh, all visitors and participants for very active and uh, productive discussion. So uh, please join me in thanking uh, everyone So uh, with this, the all formal parts of the computational chemistry class for the spring uh, 2020 uh, is uh, complete. And uh, I hope that uh, practical skills theory background and the experience of scientific communications that we practice today will uh, stay with all participants uh, long after the course is done. Okay, so uh, meeting is done. Everyone is 